today with you, you would have seen from the uh, church on gate that starts tomorrow, officially. I'm talking about it today. I um, can give it back. Um, can we have an envelope? Um, obviously, all the normal um, sanitizing procedures are, are there in place for you. Um, or you can give online. I don't simply go on the Christian Aid website. But if you're on our mailing list, you will see um, uh, you will see there's a link on the newsletter uh, that you can use. But particularly the Kelvin Fearing link has been set up uh, for, you to, for you to give. And uh, particularly at this time of considerable climate change and, and uh, extreme weather in parts of Africa where the focus is the Christian aid this year, it's, uh, it would be good if you can do so. The other thing to say is it's Ascension Day on Thursday. Uh, and so uh, we will be having a service at 10 o'clock on that Thursday morning at All Saints Fearing. Everyone's in, will be invited. It'll be a set meeting service. You'll be most welcome to come. And I now have some bands to read. So I published the bands marriage between David and Ian Mutton of this parish and Nancy Ann Calder O'Neill, also of this parish, and between Trevor George Mann of this parish and Claudia Holstorff, parish of St. Mary of the Virgin Wivenhoe. These are both for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare those now. Silence was disturbed by, which is very good. Let's pray for these couples now. Let us pray. Lord of all love, we pray for David and Nancy and for Trevor and Claudia, be with them in all their preparations and on their wedding days. Be with them in their lives together, now and after their marriage. Give them your love and their hearts throughout their married life together, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Today in our gospel reading, Jesus tells his disciples on the night before he dies that they should love one another as he has loved them. And that's a very appropriate reading for the cusp of Christian Aid Week. And reflect on that later in our service. A welcome to, to all those who are watching us online today or in the week as well. We now sit or kneel as we come to our prayers of confession. Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We keep silence for a short space as we reflect on this past week. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to mend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love and mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from all your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand, praise God, in the glory. <coughs> Lord, Lord is God, God in the highest, and 
Then they invited him to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you please stand for the gospel? Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Lord, 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 Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father may give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands, so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do please be seated, everyone. Well, as well as being the sixth Sunday of Easter and uh, beginning of the Classical Christian Aid Week, really starts tomorrow and carries on until next Sunday. It's also Rogation Sunday and uh, from the Latin word it means to ask and this of course is the time, a traditional time when the fields and the crops would be blessed that there would be a good harvest and there would be the, what's known as the beating of the vows. You go around the parish around the edges of the parish as well blessing the fields and crops and also a wider blessing for farms and farmers for all who live and work in the parish, for places of work and so on. And it seems very appropriate in some ways that we, the Rogation Sunday occurs as it often does around the time of Christian Aid Week in the middle of May. Well, the beating of the bounds has perhaps gone, uh, has 
have gone from these parishes here, although some of you may well remember them, uh, and uh, it's still something that's done in parishes in our diocese and elsewhere. But if we're honest, really, and we're not quite as rural, I'll probably get shot down with this, but we're not quite as rural as we are really in rural community. We're only up on there's a train right on cue, as you can hear. We're only 45 minutes from Liverpool Street, and we're not that far from Chelmsford or Colchester either. This said, perhaps what we've been through over this past year has enabled us to get a bit closer to that spirit and that tradition the people taking more walks during the lockdowns and with the, the roads and, and, and shops and so on quieter, be able to hear the bird song and actually appreciate the changes in nature and the seasons each year. And we've been blessed with particularly beautiful spring uh, and you can hear the bird song, I can certainly hear the bird song from here uh, and it's been glorious. Another way that perhaps we've become more aware of our connected with, with nature, our connectedness with other people, is of course through modern technology, and the internet and social media. The world has shrunk even more than when Michael Marshall McLuhan wrote words about the global village in the 1960s, in a book that I, was, I had to read when I was at university, Understanding Media, which would be very dated now. Media has moved on a great deal. We're very aware of that connectedness, not least because of the different strains of the virus that, that jump um, boundaries, cut national boundaries with a great deal of ease. Viruses and other things know nothing of national boundaries, of nationalities or ethnicities or anything else. Um, their only concern is to survive and thrive. But it is also enabled us to remain connected when those who have the technology, and it's a good point to stress, those who have got that technology can remain connected with people in other parts of the world. I really remember doing, uh, I did a wedding in, in January and the bride was American and uh, I did some Zoom calls actually while she was in the States and her, the groom was, was here in, in, in Essex. And it's just a reminder of what you can do and how you can meet across thousands of miles. Christian Aid Week begins tomorrow, as I said, and while we've had a particularly dry April, it's nothing compared to the kind of drought that parts of the country, especially places like Kenya, have been suffering um, due to climate change and other conditions, particularly climate change, either floods or storms, um, flash floods and drought. And where she is, in Kitui County in eastern Kenya, a lady called Rose, who uh, is on the cover of the, of the booklets that you, you can pick up at the back and on the poster at the back, Rose is in Kitui in eastern Kenya, and you probably can't see terribly well from here, but she's got two great big plastic, white plastic containers. And every other day, she takes those containers and has a six hour round trip by foot to collect water for her family, because there's no running water in their village. So you can imagine how heavy those containers are when they're full and how long it may take her in the day's heat to get back to her village. And she is a grandmother and she's 68. She's a pretty tough and fit 68, as you can probably see even there, but that's quite a lot. In various places, Christian Aid have helped communities build dams so they can collect water, so there's not, there's not the need for that kind of almost literally back-breaking work. And that's the kind of thing that we'd be supporting we support Christian Aid this year. And if you go on the Christian Aid website, there's some very useful and good prayer resources. Again, you won't be able to see this very well, but another lady, uh, Florence Luthiani, who lives also in Kenya, who's been one of the people enabling a dam to be built in her village. And there's a photo of her in her church, which no doubt be quite different from ours in some ways, but in other ways it's very similar. You've got benches instead of pews, I'm not sure whether they're more or less comfortable. Uh, and you've got the altar at the back, and it's ordinary time because the altar's got a green altar cloth on. So she's one of, us, almost certainly a Church of England church in her village, and there she is sitting and praying in her church, as people do here. These are our brothers and sisters. And while we may not be able to say we can love them quite the way we might love those close to us, we can offer a hand of support 
over thousands of miles, just as a way that we can contact people over thousands of miles by Zoom or Skype or whatever it is, and show our support for what they're trying to do. They don't want handouts, they want a hand up so they can live their lives sustainably and with dignity in the face of the kind of climate change extremes that we are not quite facing here, though we have seen, of course, changes in our own weather patterns. In our Gospel reading, Jesus calls his disciples friends. And in our first reading, it was very small, and you need to go back and read the whole of chapter 10 of Acts, really, to get the picture. And we don't quite understand the significance of the fact that Peter, a Jewish man, was in the house of a Gentile who was also a centurion in the occupying army, preaching about the risen Jesus, and then the, the Holy Spirit comes on those who are listening to him preaching. We don't quite understand, without some historical knowledge, the significance of that, of someone from a from an occupying force being changed and two people who would traditionally be enemies becoming friends. You can do your own versions of it in Northern Ireland or elsewhere. But at this point, barriers come down. The Holy Spirit knows nothing of boundaries and barriers any more than COVID-19 does. The Holy Spirit being affected by the Holy Spirit is an awful lot better as we, are, as we know. And these boundaries come down. These two people become brothers in Christ. Peter, who's doing the speaking, and then Cornelius and his household, the Gentile soul, the centurion, who is hearing the word of Christ. And these barriers come down, and these two become brothers. In our Gospel reading, Jesus said to his disciples, I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant doesn't know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. In other words, Jesus has said, told them about his relationship with God the Father, has enabled them to enter into something of that experience and that intimacy. And the result is that their task now is to go out and bear fruit. So that's a different kind of friendship where friendships choose each other. But there's an intimacy and an honesty and an openness and a lack of barriers that we find in true friendship here. As I said, we may, be, may not be able to quite call ourselves friends to people like Rose. We may not wish necessarily to be called friends of the earth, though I'm sure we all have a great concern for what is happening to our planet and how we can stop the worst of human degradation to it. But as I said, we can reach across the distance between ourselves and others like Rose and offer that hand of friendship and support. So let me finish with a short prayer that combines both rogation and the work of Christian aid. Let us pray. Creator God, whose will it is that the earth and the sea should bear fruit in due season, bless the labours of those who work on land and sea. Grant us all a good harvest. And in this Christian aid week, give to our brothers and sisters throughout the world strength, endurance, hope and support. And give us all grace to rejoice in your creation and in your fatherly care. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to affirm our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the night of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness 
forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel to pray. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. To the petition, Lord, hear us, please reply, Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, your spirit extends beyond all boundaries to encompass the whole world. We offer you your church, remembering the congregations where we worship. It has been a hard time for all of us. We pray especially for those who haven't been able to share in the ways of meeting through technology, for those who still feel too vulnerable to come and worship when we have been there. <coughs> and we acknowledge before you our longings to sing together, to touch and embrace. Give us the strength and the wisdom to offer love, support and hope to those who need it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today is Rogation Sunday, when the church traditionally blesses the crops and pleads with God to spare us from calamities. God of love, we thank you for renewing our sense of awe and wonder at your marvellous creation, for reconnecting more deeply with nature this past year, awakening to the sound the dawn chorus at 5 a.m., delighting in the variety of birds and insects in our gardens and watching trees and flowers bursting into new life. We pray particularly for the uplifting and inspiring ministry of the Dean of Canterbury, reading morning prayer from his glorious garden every day and watched by thousands on YouTube. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, you did not send your Son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. We offer you the world we see in all its brokenness and anguish and need for redemption. Where people suffer from war, poverty and persecution. And the planet suffers because of our greed and carelessness. Over the years of the leaders of the nations to your words of peace and justice, we pray for positive action from the G7 summit and a swift restoration of this government's overseas aid budget. Show us too where we can be agents of change. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, we pray for Christian aid week. For Rose, this year's poster girl, her family and community in Kenya, where the climate crisis hurts the most. We pray for everyone like Rose, struggling to survive without a reliable source of water, where extreme weather brings either flood or drought. And we pray for Christian aid projects to help communities like Rose's to build earth dams to store water. I believe God gives me strength and helps me to persevere. I pray that God will help people to help me, said Rose. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, your spirit draws us to rest in your love. Hold in your embrace any who are ill or at the limits of their endurance. Remember especially those who are suffering from COVID-19, particularly in India at present, and for those for whom treatment of other conditions has been delayed because of the pandemic, and those whose mental health has worsened because of lockdown. Remember those who are grieving for loved ones and those who minister to them. We pray for all who are worn down by their workloads as well, by being close to so much suffering and heartache in our hospitals and care homes. Our prayers are asked at this time for Pauline Birch, Eric Clapson, Yvonne Drefield, Amanda Garner, Bryn Gaden, 
Roger Green, Glynis Thomas, and Trisha Wimborn. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of love, your spirit breathes life into your creation. In your Son, your new life, you, sorry, in your Son, give new life to all who have died recently. Michael Andrews, Josie Rowe, and we Rich. And we remember the souls of Ethel Windsor, Mary Elliott, David Openshaw, Ellen Garrard, Wayne Turner, Cynthia Kimberley, Bertha Stracy, and Jenny Ed, whose year's mind occurs at this time. Bring us through the waters of death to the life eternal. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Just one further notice after the prayers, and Michael Andrews that Robert mentioned, who died recently, was um, Mick Andrews, who was the village handyman here for a number of years. Uh, his funeral was this Wednesday at 4.30 at Three Counties, and I understand uh, those who know him are invited, but do please contact me first, just to check that numbers are okay. Uh, but yes, it's Mick Andrews who was on the London Road, uh, and which handy man, a very good one, I understand, for many years. As we remember him and give thanks for his life, let us stand to share the peace together. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer in as well as we can a sign of God's peace to each other. Peace be with you and with God. Peace with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gates of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or sit. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is God. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the kingdom in the words our Saviour has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Just before I say the words of giving of communion, um, the communion, our practice is that I come and stand on the bottom step of the sanctuary steps here. Please come forward, please sanitise your hands uh, and remove your mask to receive communion. Or you can, if you wish, keep your mask on and go, go back and walk you and receive communion there. Um, I will dip each wafer in the wine unless uh, you wish there to be no wine and just to receive the wafer, which is absolutely fine. If so, please make that clear to me. And I will drop the wafer of arm's length into your hands so that our hands do not touch. You can sanitise your hands both before and after receiving. That will be good. Thank you. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. I do hope you enjoy the rest of this glorious day and enjoy the creation God has given us 
as we seek to do our best to preserve it and enable other, others to share in God's goodness and bounty through Christian Aid Week. Just a reminder too of Ascension Day service at All Saints Fearing at 10 o'clock on Thursday morning this Thursday. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.